Hi everyone, this is Mike Shi. This video will show you how to configure your Raspberry Pi to output to my component video adapter hat so that you have the best possible image quality. By adjusting the configuration files properly, we can get rid of these ugly non-integer scaling artifacts, for example, in the life bars here, um, that's really ugly, as well as make sure that the image fills up the full screen of your monitor so you can get rid of these ugly black bars. And these instructions should probably work on any other type of adapter as well. So to get started, you'll need an SD card with a RetroPie installation, either your, your existing one or a fresh one. And of course, what you're going to want to do is plug this into your computer. And um, what should pop up is uh, boot the boot, um, boot partition for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're going to start working with this now. Here's the boot partition. Um, we're going to start loading this up with the config files. Go on www.retrotink.com. And um, here I have under the instructions a write-up of how to do this. Now, of course, the easiest thing to do is download the pre-made RetroPie image I, I have here. Um, these instructions are really for if you have an existing installation or you want to do something custom. I have a config file kit here. Um, please download this. Pretty fast download. And to get all this information on the Raspberry Pi, I think the easiest thing to do is to just copy this to your boot partition. And we're going to eject the drive. Now the next step is to put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and power it up. Now you'll notice in the last step I didn't actually update the config.txt file. That way if you don't have SSH you can still do the, do the next uh, sequence of instructions on a computer or a, um, or a modern monitor through HDMI. Um, but let's go back to the screen cap. So now we're going to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, but like I said earlier, um, if you don't want to use SSH or if you don't have network access for some reason, because we haven't modified the config.txt to output through the um, DPI port yet, you should you know, still be able to do the same steps over HDMI on your computer monitor or an, uh, or an HDTV. My Raspberry Pi um, has this IP address. You'll need to change it to, um, to what makes sense for you. First thing we're going to do is go to the boot boot folder. So here's the boot folder, and then we're going to go to the uh, folder we just downloaded um, earlier in the last step with all the config files. And the first thing we're going to do is copy the config.txt um, to the boot directory. So just sudo copy config.txt period, period, slash, slash, which should um, copy the config.txt, uh, which we made, um, and overwrite that into the folder um, uh, directly above it. So let's go one folder up, and let's take a look at the contents of the config.txt to make sure we got the right settings. And um, here we are. Basically, um, the this new settings I entered are down here. While we're here, um, I might as well as just uh, go over the uh, the settings that I um, that we that we're putting in. Um, we want to disable overscan because um, we want to use the full resolution, the full frame buffer that that we have. Um, let the CRT deal with the overscan. Now, in this line, I have display uh, the I've set the overlay to DPI 24, which uses basically all of the GPIO pins to enable 8-bit color um, color output. If you're using um, if you're using a different uh, adapter hat, you'll probably want to, uh, you're most likely be using DPI um, DPI 666 for the GERT 66 type adapters. Now enable DPI LCD. What that does is route the video output, of course, to the DPI port. Um, same thing here. DPI output format. What that does is it sets the um, it sets the uh, the output to 8-bit mode and the next two lines basically says we want to use these custom HDMI timings right here. So when it boots up, um, it boots up in 320 by 240 
Um, I've worked uh, quite a bit on these timings to make sure that they're as close to the NTSC type timings as possible. So at this stage, um, if you re rebooted the Pi, it should now output um, through the DPI port um, to the component video or what other or whatever other output you're using to your monitor. The next step we're going to do is we're going to add the scripts which switch um, which switch the high res high horizontal resolution mode 1600 by 240 for running games. Now this is probably the most important stage step because most of the artifacts we saw at the beginning of the video come from the fact that um, you're trying to scale these weird resolutions from uh, your video game console to only 320 pixels. So that's a non-integer scale. If we, on the other hand, run the, frame, uh, run the resolution at 1600, that's a lot more pixels to go around when you're scaling up. And of course, when you display it on the CRT, the aspect ratio gets restored, except you don't see the scaling artifacts. The problem with running at 1600 by at 240 is that all the GUI elements and uh, an emulation station uh, become unusable because everything is so squished and small. Uh, what uh, Michael Vencio came up with um, is this clever way to configure um, retro, uh, uh, RetroPie to switch to the high resolution mode during the actual game and switch back when you're done. And he's made these two scripts here, which we've also, which you also just downloaded. Place to put them is and the opt retropy configs all uh, directory. So here we are. Um, all we're going to do is uh, do a uh, sudo cp um, slash boot config uh, retroutine config run command on start.sh. We're going to copy that here and we're going to copy the on end.sh here. You can take a quick look at the contents of these scripts. I'll show you what they do as well. So there's not much to it. Basically, um, it it sets the on, the on start sets the timing mode to 1600 by 240, and um, on end restores it to the same timing that you saw earlier in the config.txt file. So when you go back to emulation station, um, all the uh, all the graphical elements are still usable. Now Michael has a, has a pretty complex and, and pretty amazing script which actually detects which emulation core and switches to, the, to a custom resolution. I think this may be a little bit better, but um, at least the approach I'm using right now is to just make the modifications in the core and, and try to keep this script as simple as possible. For the next step, we're going to edit each core's config file to actually use the higher resolution mode um, and scale the image properly. This um, is really thanks to Kevin. Um, he did a lot of great work. Uh, characterizing the output of the Raspberry Pi and comparing it exactly against a actual console to make sure that all the pixels line up um, on the on the TV or monitor. So um, all these settings, um, it's uh, really thanks to Kevin. We're going to start with the Nintendo um, because that's we started with, we started by uh, looking at Castlevania at the very beginning of this video. Um, you can find the config files for um, for RetroPie in the slash opt slash retropy slash configs and we're going to go to the NES folder. There are a few files. The one we need we really care about is retroarch.cfg. So I'm going to use nano to edit the file. You'll see that there's um, not much here. Uh, don't delete anything. We're going to add some stuff. The first thing we're going to do is add the line video full screen equals to true because we want to use um, the full frame buffer. Um, we're going to go through each of these steps here. Second line is video scale integer equals to false. We want to do that because of course we're using a very non-integer -integer scaling and relying on the CRT to bring us back to normal. Oh, I forgot. It seems that um, some examples use use quotes, some don't. I'm going to use quotes because um, I found that I, in some in in one case I think it it didn't work unless I did put the quotes in. So why be why not be and just be safe, right? We're going to turn off smoothing um, because I think the CRT actually already does enough blurring. And if you turn on smoothing, I think the uh, the vertical direction gets a bit of uh, anti-aliasing, which is 
undesirable in this case. We're going to turn off threaded video because that actually Im improves the lag. And of course we're going to disable the shader because who needs a shader when we actually have a real uh, real CRT to, to play on, right? Let's set the aspect ratio index to 22 because Again, we're projecting up to 1600 by 240, and we want to tell the court, yes, um, use the custom aspect ratio we're about to provide. The next four settings are really important. Custom viewport with height, height X and Y. Um, for each setting, for each, uh, for each console, Kevin's figured out the, exactly, uh, the exact settings to use so that the image matches up correctly. We're going to look at the, uh, the NES entry here. So let's start with custom equals to 1526. This tells the core to use 1526 out of 1600 pixels. Um, that's the correct scaling for the Nintendo. Same idea for the height because the Nintendo uses 224 lines um, out of the possible to 240. Now, custom viewport viewport X. What that does is it adds the correct X offset so that of the 1526 out of 1600 pixels we're using, it's centered on the screen. And this for the Nintendo, it's 70. Similarly, uh, we're going to use seven for the Y offset. And that's pretty much it. Just look over these uh, these settings real fast. They all look good. Let's save it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to reboot the Raspberry Pi. At this point, you should have your um, TV or PVM or what other uh, or other monitors set up and and connect it up because now it's going to use a new config.txt file. It won't be outputting through HDMI anymore. Let's see if our new settings worked. So we're going to go to the Nintendo um, category, sort of Castlevania. That looks much better already. Um, you can see up here, look at the life bars. Unlike before, all the bars are nicely scaled and, um, and uh, are nicely uh, distributed evenly. You don't have any of those weird non-integer integer scaling artifacts. Now, I noticed on my monitor, um, you actually have a little bit of a, you have a little bit of a black gap here, whereas the screen ends here, um, probably goes off the screen on this side. So if you want to adjust this a little bit, um, that's actually really easy. You don't need to edit the text files. What I'm going to do is go to the menu. And it, we're going to go to settings, video. And you'll see all these nice settings which we punched in manually are actually um, reflected. Uh, the core is using our, our new config file. And in my case, to get rid of this black border on this side, I'm just going to shift the X position back a little bit. Yeah, so that's about centered. You can see there's no bars on each side. I'm not sure why it's this case on my monitor. Maybe it's just uh, the the um, the timing is a little bit off. Um, like I said, the settings that Kevin provided are should be calibrated against an actual unit. Um, but I think this is actually easier than trying to adjust the monitor. Just mess with the settings in uh, in in uh, RetroArch itself. And bam, everything looks great. Everything's, uh, it actually spans the full screen. You don't have any annoying black gaps. Nothing's cut off. And, um, and, and because I've turned off threaded video, um, the lag is about as good as it's gonna get. And everything is silky smooth running at 60 frames per second. That wraps up um, the tutorial. It's a bit of a pain, but if you want to configure other systems, you basically do the exact same steps. You go into the slash opt retropy configs and edit the uh, retroarch.cfg file, 
and um, add these 10 lines with the appropriate settings in this table. Uh, as you can probably guess, I'm working on filling this table out for more systems. Um, if for now there is a system that you, that uh, isn't provided, you can always use the default settings, which is set the viewport width to 1600, and you want to set the port uh, the viewport height to 224 or 240. I think different uh, emulation cores handle overscan differently, so depending on the core, either 224 or 240 will produce the correct vertical resolution without adding any extra scaling factors. And if you're going to use the, these default settings, since you're using the entire uh, entire screen, you can probably set the viewport X and viewport Y to zero. Um, although I will say that for if you're using 224, I, uh, just correction, you probably want to set the viewport Y to seven or eight. That centers that centers the image uh, correctly on the vertical direction. Um, again, if you guys uh, play with this and come up with new or better settings, um, let me know. Uh, that'd be much appreciated. Um, and uh, like I said earlier in this video, I think everything that I've uh, I've mentioned in this, you can probably use for any other sort of um, GERT VGA 666 or other um, display parallel interface type adapter. They all work pretty much the same way, um, have similar timing characteristics. The only modifications you're going to want to do is modify um, this line here, DPI output format and DPI... Um, DPI, sorry, DT overlay from DPI 24, which is 8-bit to whatever is, is right for the 6-bit mode. So anyways, um, hope you guys find this interesting, and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Thanks.